and other, your brother, uh, friend Vern as well. Thank you for sharing those powerful messages in music. But uh, Brother Walker, uh, thank you for coming all the way from the Bay Area. Uh, he's a leader of a group called uh, Few Good Men that travel over the states to sing. I hope you'll bring your, the whole group so you can bless our Citrus High Church. <laughs> so praise the Lord for those who have their parts. Worshiping God is not a solo activity. Worshiping God is in a collective uh, blessings for all of us that we can adore and give God the glory. God will move when we give Him honor and glory. Even though our voices, our behavior may not be uh, satisfactory in the presence of a God, but He loves to hear us come and worship the Lord. Can you say amen? Praise be to God. I just want to mention this. I feel impressed that uh, we're going to have a baptism next Sabbath. I don't know who we're going to be baptized, but I will have strong enough the Holy Spirit say, there were going to be a baptism next Sabbath. So if the Holy Spirit knocks in your heart that you want to give your lives to God and tell the, the church and the community that you are ready to be baptized, make sure you respond to that. You know, baptism is a way of humbly uh, give your lives to God and say, Lord, here I am, lost, but now I'm found. So we are... I can feel that for those who have that longing and that desire, all way you overdue. So maybe this coming Sabbath will be your opportunity that the church will surround you with uh, love and care and uh, we celebrate uh, rededication of your life to God. Or even say, this is my first time I, I learned about the truth of salvation and the, and the historical narrative of uh, uh, gospel of salvation. This is a time that you give your lives to God. So I feel that God will, will impress you. And as I feel that next Sabbath will be a baptism. If no baptism, we'll all be baptized by the Holy Spirit. What do you say? That's true. I will let you invite you to join with me as we pray for our message today. Father God, thank you for calling your children, shared about the day to come and fellowship. Dear Lord, if we're not for that noble plan in the hearts of God to call the children to come weekly on the Sabbath day, because you will be dwelling and be presence among us. Thank you, dear Lord. Help us to feel your presence and let the Spirit of God speak through the Word. Dear Lord, we pray that if we not covered by the Holy Spirit, we will be in the way of the Word. So fill our hearts with joy and speak for us and through us. Let your hearts be moved and touched. In the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. This is the fifth presentation of our serious studies in the book of Revelations, especially uh, when we look at the visions that was given to the Apostle John in the book of Revelation. I would like to let you know, the book of Revelation is such a wonderful uh, book. It's filled with uh, golden nuggets, hidden. But I would like to uh, remind you to enjoy those Wonderful truth nugget hidden in the treasure box of Revelation. You have to have the key. You have to have the secrets to unlock that treasure house. And I humbly submit 
before you this morning. That key to understand the mystery of the, of the Bible and all throughout the Bible is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. The key to understand all the prophecy of the Bible is Jesus Christ. And I'm very humble and delighted to, to know that in order to, to understand all those wonderful, powerful, the message of prophecy being preserved throughout generations from the times of Adam, Noah, Abraham, throughout the time of Israel. It's center in Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? I'm excited to share that. The whole Bible is centered in Jesus Christ. So we're going to look at this. So we're looking at uh, the third church, the church of Bechamos. And uh, if you look at the, at the Bible, it, it says it's a compromising church. I said, what? What, is, what did the, 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 the church of Smyrna or Bechamos, what did he do that compromised something that was, was given to her or a blessings that was given to her? But let's look what that message to the church of Bergamos. For those who are just joining in or visit us this morning. You know, when you go home, read chapter 1 and chapter 2 and chapter 3 of the book of Revelation. And it just you glue you in right away. Because there, the, that, those three chapters... Uh, John was in the, on the island of Patmos. He was there, given, uh, he was moved there, sent there as a prisoner. He was exiled in that island of Patmos because the government of Rome uh, did not want him to run around because he was powerful and preaching the, the message that shaken not only the religious leader but also the government and so forth. So they put him away. But let me tell you. No one can tug away the truth because God revealed the majestic and the glory through that experience. And we are going to look at this uh, message of the seven churches and we look particularly to the church of Bacchamos. The church of Bacchamos is a church that is, as you look on the screen, uh, is one of the seven churches and... Uh, just look over there. There is a geographical locations of those seven churches in Asia Minor. But if you look at the Jerusalem at the bottom of that screen and the arrow goes up, that's when Jesus crucified. The disciples were kind of, you know, dispelled from Jerusalem and and the disciples and the believers start to spread all over the all over the, the region, the area, and they went up to Antioch, and then they find their ways to Asia Minor. But wherever the Christians, the followers, they declare the gospel of salvation, the gospel of good news, that Jesus was the fulfillment of prophecies, that Jesus, the Son of God, incarnated. And live among us, died and resurrected. That is the story that they spread, and we are blessed with that story. So, therefore, the book of Revelations and the seven churches just give you a little snapshot of the, uh, the cluster of those seven churches. You will catch up when you go on the YouTube or the Facebook. They have the previous that will bring him up to speed. But for our purpose and study this, in, this morning, we're looking at the church, the church of Bechamos. The church of Bechamos, I don't know if you see that from screen. The, the, the name Bechamos, it comes from the Greek that's, you know, split into two. And, you know, looking at the scholars and those who study Bechamos, it means the tower city, or there's a twin tower city. 
But they say it's a tower city. The other name of the other meaning of the word Bechamos is the city of marriage. So she said, a tower city and a city of marriage? What does that mean? That definition, it was actually works of one of a very wise uh, archaeologist. Or he was used to be a lawyer, but he interested in uh, digging. So he did that and he pointed out Bacchus is a uh, one of the ancient city that uh, this is what he said about the uh, church of Bacchus. His name is Golden Robbins, uh, Rob, Robbins, Robinson. And this is what he said. He examined life in the first century of Bergamum, the pagan cults devoted to Roman emperor, and the Greek god Zeus and Ascapos, and the martyrdom of Christian bishop Antipas. Happened there. Pergamum's altar of Zeus takes center stage as it's excavated and taken to German, where its altar inspired architectures of Adolf Hitler. So all of we know Germans uh, very known with their architectures, but according to the studies of this scholar, some of the uh, amazing mind that's actually inspired by the architectures and the engineer of Ed Beckhamus. I'd like to point out two things. Beckhamus is known to be the city that has the altar of Zeus, is also known to be the throne of the devil in the ancient world. But symbolically, the message that was given to the church of Beckhamum was actually to have some, some sort of, of relations to those historical nature of Beckhamum. But I would like to point out to you this morning in spite of the center where the, the altar of Zeus or the throne of the devil, there you find the church, the little group of Christians. They believe in Jesus Christ and they have the message to those who do not believe in God. Can you believe it that in that concentration of people who don't believe in God, there's the group of Christians in Bechamos. And that is where the angels of the Lord told John, this is the message that you need to give to the church of Bergamum. Shall we continue to follow along? And this is what the Bible tells us. If you turn your scripture to Revelation chapter 2, verse 12 to 15, if you find it hard to read on the screen, I would like to read it for us as you follow. And to the angels of the church of Bacchus write, This thing say he who has the sharp two-edged sword. I know your work, you were, and where you dwell, where Satan's throne is. And you hold fast to my name and did not deny my faith, even in days of which Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was killed among you where Satan dwelt. Have you seen that language there? That was the language of the angel, or the language of Jesus Christ himself, who walked among the candlesticks, and then he referenced to the angel, says, write this to the church of Bechamos. He pointed out Bechamos, where the what? The dwelling of Satan. And also there where some of the faithful believers will be what? Will be persecuted, executed, and being uh, mocked or being marginalized. I'll let you let you know. The message that was given to seven churches has a, a continuous message, not only particular for those churches in Asia Minor, but there is a golden uh, truth that continues to comes from those churches, from 
other generations to generations to generations of the Christian movement that share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And even is a message for us. We will be marginalized. We will be singled out. We will be in a place where it's, a, it's supposed to be the place of the dwelling of the, of the devil. But there's a hope for us. There is the hope for us. And according to the writings and the message to the church of Beckhamus. Verse 14. But I have a few things against you because you have. There are those who hold the doctrines of who? Balaam. Oh, you know, our children love to hear the story of Balaam. All right, but let's continue. Balaam who taught Balak to put a stumping block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit sexual immorality. Thou shalt also have those who hold the doctrine of Nicolaitans, which things I hate. And he said, Repent or else I will come to you quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Right? So, in the church of Bacchus, or Beckhamum, you know, it, the church of Beckham was planted in the territories where it's just, you know, dominant by pagans and evil worshippers. You know, the altar of Zeus is there, known to be the throne of the devil. But there's a group of Christians who wants to hold the teachings of Jesus. Right? Instead, they hold the teachings of Balaam. You know, the teaching of Balaam is in the Bible. It's found in, a, you know, uh, First Corinthians and other narratives. It's there. But let us walk along and find out what does it, the teachings of Balaam is all about. If you go home and you look at the book of Number 22 and then uh, Chronicles 22, First Corinthians 22, you will find the story of Balaam. It's a wonderful story. Remember when... Uh, uh, Balaam, he was considered to be a, a prophet. And then a man named Balak came to him and said, Balaam, I want you to come. Do you know why Balak wants Balaam? Uh, Balak was the king of Moabites. And then Balak come to Balaam. I want you, Balaam, to come. I will give you some, some money. I will give you a good, uh, great you know, price, if you come, and all you need to do is to curse the children of God. Remember the children of God, they just left Egypt. Remember that? They just left Egypt, and they travel all from the, the wilderness. And when they come around uh, Moabite, this king, Balak, was kind of concerned. and said, oh, these people will just what? They just want to destroy everything. And you heard a lot about the Israelites. Just bear with me, I'm telling the story. And then Balak said, Balaam, come. Come and curse these people. I will give you a wonderful, you know, a wonderful price, a wonderful gift. Balaam said, no, you cannot uh, curse those people because God has blessed those people. But Balaam said, you know, stay there. Don't go home. But I'll go ask God to see what God says. Let me ask you. You cannot reason with things like that. Are you with me? When you feel like someone is trying to uh, reason so that you will uh, reject it, what God asks of you, you better be think twice. So God said to Balaam, don't go, Balaam. Those people are chosen people. Balaam came back and told the, the servants of Balak, go tell Balak, I'm not going to go these other People that are being chosen by God, they will be blessed. But guess what? You know, the devil will never shy away when he come and tempted us. Are you with me? He comes twice, third times, fifth times, or maybe many, many times until you what? You give him. Are you with me? So, Balak, servants went back, keep coming again, keep coming again, and they bring what? The, the, the gifts start adding up, adding up. And then, once again, Balaam said, okay, I'm going to ask God. And God said, Balaam, you go. But don't what? Don't say anything. 
Just bless those people. Whatever I said to you, say it. Watch with me. So Balaam went. And when Balaam hot his donkey and he went along, who did they meet on the way? An angel, right? The donkey saw the angel and he just ran away. And then Balaam was so mad and then he just expressed his anger to the donkey. So he beat him up. The angels went the other directions, the donkey and Balaam's riding along. And then close to the fence, and then somehow the, the, the donkey saw the angels again, and then moved aside, and then squeezed the feet, the legs of Balaam against the fence. And he was so mad. He beat the daylight out of the donkey. So he continued on until there's no place to move. And then the donkey just lay there. And Balaam still what? Beating the donkey. Balaam said, if I have a sword, I will just put you to sleep. But the donkey said, Balaam, when did I ever disobey you, Balaam? And then the angels of the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam. And he saw the angels of the Lord. And you know what the angel said to Balaam? It were not for the donkey. Today is the day of judgment for you. I will let you let you know. God's mercy for us is so abundant. We did so much mistake in our lives. But God is still what? Loving and patience with us. So Balaam went there. Instead of cursing, he what? He blessed the people of God. Balak was so mad with Balaam. And then he cannot say anything because God said, you bless the people. Let me tell you. This society, there's a lot of people like Balak. They hire other people, try to curse those who believe in God. Could that be the same scenario that we are in? Some people don't like us because we worship God. Because things that come out in our believing in God is something that's contrary to their beliefs. So they try everything to what? To destroy us. But let me tell you, God's words stand in trials time. I would like to let you know that instead of uh, leaving Balak alone. Balak said, Balaam said to Balak, this is the only way you need to do to defeat these people. Allow your daughters, allow your sons to what? To intermarriage with the people of God. Are you with me? Allow your daughters, the Moabites, allow your Moabites girls, allow your Moabites young men to intermingle with the young men and the young women of what? Of the people of God. Let me tell you. When the people of God in the marriage with the people of Moabite or the people of the world, what happens to them? They abandon their faith and they what? They, they embrace the other gods. Gods of the Moabites. Could it be that is the same thing happens in our society today? We actually compromise because what? We intermingle with the world. What they want, we feel like we want it. What they believe, it seems that like we try to get their mind. My friend, no wonder why the church of Smyrna, the church of Beckham, is known to be the church of what? A compromising church. The church that compromises because, because what? They intermingle with the world. Let me tell you this. It's good to intermingle with the church intentionally. What did I say? Intentionally to what? To share the what? The gospel. But not in the mingle in a way so we can learn of their behavior and then we lose our what? Our identity. Identity as a children of God. Are you with me? We, Jesus said, go out therefore and what? Make disciples. We, we need to mingle. We need associates with them. But not to compromise our what? Our integrity and the message within us. 
when we try to be like the world, we're going to lose our identity. We're going to lose our faith. And then we're going to be like Balaam's doctrines. And we're going to unfold that as we continue. Times, if times allowed us, we will continue to follow our story. Here, and the, and the, and the pastors continue. So you also have some who holds the teaching of Nicolaitans. Repent. If not, I will come to you soon and war against them with the sword in my mouth. In fact, book of Revelation, the one that walks among the candlestick, there's a description that there's a... His hair was like wool, uh, his uh, rope, it shines like snow, and then there's a sash around him. The, the, the descriptions of Jesus. And then it shows there's a, 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 a glimpse or fire like sword comes out of his mouth. Sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. He will come with the truth and fight against those people who teach the doctrines of Balaam and the doctrines of what? Of Nicolaitans. Nicolaitans are those, uh, these are the Greeks' philosophers. They believe in God, uh, but they don't, but they have to reason to see if they can feel it and touch it. Those are not, those are scientific investigations. If they don't prove, if they prove God is there, so they believe. If they don't, it's just, just like a what? It's fantasy. But let me tell you, you can never weigh and put a, a, try to uh, quantify faith. Are you with me? Our mind is too narrow to understand the power of faith. It's beyond that. My friend, let me tell you, God is too big for us, our minds to comprehend. But he gives us the what? The symbol of faith to believe that God is the creator. God is supreme beings beyond everything that we see. Scientific today try to prove there's God. They cannot figure it out. They say, well, it's just like another theory. My friend, I would like to let you know, Beckham us. I want you to know there are people who hold the doctrines of Balaam and hold the doctrines of the Nicolaitans, the intellectual mind of people. Let me tell you, we better as well saturated ourselves with the knowledge of Christ, the knowledge of the truth. Thank you for the lessons this morning. Feel with the knowledge that, that give, us to, to give us the confirmations and the surety about the word. The life in Christ, Christ in us, and the bare fruits, not our goodness, but the what? Because Christ lives in us. Can you say amen? None of any goodness in us. We have nothing, but we can do all things through who? Christ who lives in us. I no longer live, but Christ lives. Scientific reasoning, they said your mind is an extension of of your intelligence, and that is a little God in us. Watch out. I would like to let you know, not I, but what? But Christ. Here is the series of the churches of the seven churches. The church of Ephesus, we talk about the church of Ephesus that lost her first love. The church of Smyrna, the Smyrna that, that, that we talked about recently about what? Hold on, hang in there. The suffering church. And now the church of what? Pekamom. Pekamom says, God said, what? You have to what? You have to know the truth. You got to endure those who were tempted you, but hold on to what you have. My friend, I don't want to be uh, too, too much so that it will complicate things. But here's a little summary. Chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3 of the book of Revelation is a vision of the seven churches. And then you come to chapter 4. Chapter 4, there is a vision of what? Of the throne of God. Marvelous and great, majestic of God. Sitting on that throne. Read chapter 4. And then chapter 5 is 
uh, another way to look at there's a throne and then the right side of the right hands of the throne there's a what there's a little scroll so chapter 5 is focused on the what the little scroll on the right side of the throne and the apostle john was grieving and who is able qualified to open the little scroll and the answer is the angel is only the what? Only the lamb that was slain for before the foundation of the world. Who's that lamb was slain before the foundation of the world? Who, who is Jesus Christ? He's also saying, John, don't cry. Because the one that worth it to open the little scroll is the what? Is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Who's that lion? My friend, let me tell you. To understand all prophecy is centered in Jesus Christ. It connects Old Testament narratives and prophetic language in the new testament and what to come center in jesus christ so and then chapter six chapter six is an explanation of that little scroll that has what seven seal are you with me chapter one two three is about the visions of the seven churches chapter four is the throne of god in fact, I would like to say that is a climax of the faithfulness of the children of God to see the glory of the heavenly kingdom and the throne of God. Can you say amen? And then on the right hand of the throne is a little scroll. And that little, little scroll is the story of salvation. They need to be what? They need to be opened. The first, the first seal of the seven scroll is a what? It's a white horse. Representation of the beauty of the what? Of the gospel. Based on Jesus Christ. And then the second, the second seal, when, when that scroll is it's like peeling, you peel the first uh, roll, there comes the white horse. And then you peel the second, uh, that second seal, there comes the what? The red horse. Representing the church in, in suffering. We talk about the church of Smyrna. But now the church peeled the third layer, and there comes the what? The black horse. The black horse is representation, as the Bible tells us. We will unfold, but I just give it to you. The, the black horse represents the what? A spiritual famine. What did I say? A spiritual famine. It means because we compromise the truth. And then we no longer know the truth. Because the, the societies today, you know, there's no absolute. What you believe is your truth. So, keep your truth and enjoy your truth. So, there's a relativism. Everybody got the truth. So, the louder you are, more people will listen to you. But that's not the case. There is an absolute truth. The absolute truth is who? Jesus Christ, the absolute truth. I would like to let you know, when they have lost the truth about Jesus Christ. They were scrambled trying to find that truth. And that truth is Jesus Christ. And people, there was a, there's going to be a spiritual famine. My friend, this morning, I'm, I'm glad you come this morning. Entice your interest into the Word of God. Oh, have times in the Word of God. God will fill you with knowledge so you can see what's happening in the world around us. So, it's a parallelism of the what? Seven seal and the seven churches. Are you with me? Here, here's, here's what the Bible tells us. Here is the meaning of the third seal. All right? Hang with me. Verse 5 in Revelation chapter 6. And when, he, and when the Lamb... Open the third seal. I heard the third living creature say, Come. Then I look and saw a black horse, and its rider held in his hand a pair of what? A scale, a balance. Verse 6. And I heard what sounds like a voice from among four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius. And the three quarts of parley for denarius, and do not harm the what? Do not harm the oil and the, and the wine. Like I said, there's a lot of symbolic nuggets in this passage. But for the sake of our, our message, 
you know, those, the weeds and barley. Those are elements that you need to go to, to take with you if you had to offer the what? The Thanksgiving offering. When, that, when that, the children of Israel is abundant, so they would bring those things and give their sacrifice. They bring the bread, the barley, and, 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 uh, and also the, uh, the wheat, and, and also the wine and the oil. What it means over here, it means there's going to be what? There's going to be a great famine. It means that there's going to be people who are looking for the truth, but they do not find the truth. There's so many truths. How can I understand if you have a very compelling truth with the truth that I know? My friend, uh, spiritual famine is the worst thing of all, but you can never run dry if you have that found yourself rooted in the word of God and say amen. That is what the church of Beckham says. There's going to be a spiritual famine. But therefore, you want to hold on to that faith. Let's continue. There's more to come. He who has an ear, let him hear. What the Spirit says to the church, to him who overcome, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat. And I will give him a white stone and the stone of a new name written on one which no one knows except him who accepts it. You know, a lot of scholars go through this and excited. But these are the rewards of those who what? Those who reward, those who what? Continues to overcome. Let me tell you, how can we overcome? Overcome our what? Our nature of longing and wanting some more. We live in a society today, we never satisfy. We always want for more. Is that right? You will never be happy. You only be happy in who? In Jesus. Whether you have much or less, you can only find peace and happiness in who? In Christ Jesus. Whether you have a great investment, have a lot of uh, stocks in stock market, good for you. But sometimes you will not sleep well at night. Maybe you have less. But rich with the treasure of the hope in Christ Jesus. Give me Jesus. That's all I need. My friend, the church of Berkamas, you need to overcome. Overcome the longing and desire to want some more. Wants to be like the society. Wants to be your neighbor. Wants to be your, your, the one that you work together. The Bible tells us, if you want to be the first, be what? Be the last. If you want to be ahead, be a servant. It's a kingdom upside down. Not I, but, but Christ. My friend, the Bible tells us as we continue, when the church of Smyrna, the first church is the church of Ephesus, all right, the, the church that Jesus established with his disciples, the apostolic church. And right after the apostolic church, they went out and preached, and they have some disciples. They're disciples, and these are the disciples of the disciples. They, so the, the, uh, some Bible students, they call it the church fathers. You know, Clements of Rome, the bishop of Rome, Ignatius of Antioch, the bishop of Antioch, Polycarp of Smyrna. These are the giants of the of the of the faith in God. Most of these people are Sabbath keeper. What did I say? The, the, the church fathers, most of them keep the Sabbath. The reason why they keep the Sabbath is because you will see that later on as we uncover. But let's continue because of sake of time. You know, Polycarp, very smart man. He's a leader of, he's an elder that lead the church Myrna. Polycarp, the bishop of Smyrna was smarter throughout the, throughout the sanctions of the Roman government. It seems that the Jews of Smyrna were more antagonistic than were the Romans. What did, I, what did the, 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 the statement say? It seems that the, what, the Jewish people are more angrier than the, to the Smyrna than the what? The Roman. You know why? The Jewish people... They keep the Sabbath, but they don't believe in who? In Jesus Christ. 
But they always have an anger toward those who uphold the faith in who? In Jesus Christ. Remember the story of uh, uh, Paul? Saul, he was, remember Saul in Acts chapter 2, chapter 1, chapter 2? No, the Acts chapter 9. Saul was a young judge. He was zealous for the, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the doctrines of God. And then he went out to persecute the, what? the Christians. Why? Because of Jesus Christ. You remember that? So the Jewish, they believe in all the commandments of God. But they don't believe that Jesus Christ is the what? Is the Messiah. So they crucified him. So those who believe in Jesus, the Jewish hate them. So they try to ties into the Romans to go after the who? The Christians. So that is the reason why this poor Christian, they try to, to, to protect themselves and then compromise their truth. We, we will continue. I don't want to be ahead of our, our story because this is a history factual that we need to know. The changing of the Sabbath happened around this time. Happened around the time of Bechamos. Because they compromised the what? The truth in order to what? To survive the ridicules of other people who believe in God. The most challenging time for us is people of our families. Is that right? It is right. What happened? You, you, we used to go to church together, then now you change. You find and then you change. Are you with me? People that we grow up together. And then when you surrender yourself to God with the truth that you know, some of them are very, very mean to us. And the Bible tells us, you need to what? You need to overcome. Overcome those relationships. But what? Have a solid relationship with Jesus Christ. My friend, around the time of Bechamos, around the time of Bechamos, has this man... What's his name? Constantine. We read more about this man, Constantine. Remember those faithful church, uh, church fathers, uh, Clements, and then we have uh, Ignatius, and then we have Polycarp. The famous giants never be shaken their faith. They stand when they throw them in the fire, when they persecute, they stand tall. This, this man... Or this emperor watched these people and inspired with the loyalty and commitment of these people. Let me tell you, some people are watching us. They watch for the loyal, committed people, unshakable in the truth of God. People are not following you if you are what? If you are just lukewarm. Compromise. This man was inspired, inspired by the prayer of his mother. His mother was a prayer warrior. And then the life of other giants. And this man, I want to be like them. So when he became an emperor of Rome, what, you know what did he do? He had an edict of Milan. No more persecution of the Christians. But he wrote a law that everybody needs to come together as what? As a brothers and sisters. Remember what Balaam did? If you don't beat them, what you do? If you don't beat them, join them. My friend in citrus sight. You know, sometimes we feel like we're defeated. Where are the people? Don't worry. Unshakable in the truth of God. And then people are watching us. Is that right? But don't, don't compromise. I want you to know that you need to overcome those, those insecurity in us. The reason why we're insecure because we don't root it in the life and the truth of Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? Shake away those insecurity. Shake away our fear and our, our too sensitive to the people. Yes, yeah, sensitive in the right way, but you be bold in Christ so that your faith will not be what compromise. This man, Constantine, convicted with the faithfulness of those church mothers, and then he come into power, no more persecution of Christians, and they make Christians to be the one, to be the church of the state. Watch out. When the church and the state unify, it becomes much more difficult. Are you with me? But this man, 
a lot of things happen in his country because he wants to bring every. There is a title that's given to uh, the pontif Pontifex Maximum. The, the Ember of the Romans will receive these titles because they should supposed to be what? The high priest to accommodate any religion. Rome has a lot of religion. Are you with me? It's just like today, pluralism. They have all this kind of religion. And the Ember of Rome needs to accommodate all those. And his title is what? Pontifex Maxima. He is the, the priest that accommodates whether you worship the trees, whether you worship the moon and the sun, where you were worship in all kind of things, and also you worship God. He accommodates you because he has that title of what? Pontifex Maximus, the high priest or the bridge, the bridge barrier or the bridge builder connects people. But let me tell you, not the works of people, but what we must follow the what? The word of God. What happened? In fact, I, I, I just a little quick, not giving you the, the slides that we have. But you know, when when comes continue to go, the church that become the the church the, the, the government allow the safe haven for the church. And when that happened, all things compromise inside the church. They bring in things that that a you know, Bibles tell us not to do. They allow it to happen. I want you to pause for a minute. If you look at the Christian church today, we're in the same predicament. Is that it? Everything's coming in and we reason things out. My friend, yes, we have the love. Love of men. But the love of God surpasses everything. Are you with me? We cannot afford to compromise the truth. And that's a problem of the church of Pacamas. Church of Pacamas, through uh, this man, Constantine, his good heart, tried to bring people together. He wrote a, uh, a, a degree that to allow the day that the sun worshipers to be the day that everybody worship. And then because the Christians are, are having hard time because they are, their brothers and sisters, the Jewish, who believe in the word of God, they believe in the Bible, they believe in the commandments, but they don't believe in Jesus. They were rejected by the Jews, so they only find a safe haven to find another day. Are you with me, church? That's the reason why we have Christians keep Sunday and other peoples, us, for humble reason. We are not compromising the truth because the Sabbath and the law of God can never be compromised by the, by the laws of this, of this world and this society. What you say? My friend, Amber, the Amber was, was able to, uh, to give uh, because of, uh, of that uh, situation. The Ember Christians give the Bishop of Rome that title, the title of what? Pontifex Maximus. He's going to be a bridge builder. He's going to be the shepherd. He's going to be the high priest of all religion. And then later on, he was also given a uh, another opportunity to be the most powerful man not only he's a almost like an emperor but also he was as religious leader Justin is able to 553 Justin issue a decree legally giving the bishop of Rome a complete authority over the entire Christian church and the western half of the Roman what Roman Empire the religious leaders, and also a what? A government leader, a political leader. All that was given to the what? So I'm just telling you the history. But let me tell you, the bottom line is, 
If we compromise the truth because of the what? The peer pressure. If we compromise the truth because we want to be, rel- we want to be relevant. If you want to compromise the truth is because we want, we want to be rel- uh, relatively sound. Watch out. My friend, my appeals to you today. Jesus said this word. But I have few things against you. Because you have those who hold the doctrines of who? Balaam. What did Balaam do? He allowed Balak, the young people of uh, Moabites, to in the marriage with the people of God. Is that right? Young men, young women, in the marriage. And then through that relationship, everything comes into the what? Into the family of God and things go. Remember, we have to preach the gospel to the world, but we don't want to be like the what? Like the world. Know the difference. We need to share and love the world, but not what? Not be like the world. Because Jesus said, go ye therefore and make disciples, baptize him in the name of Jesus, because I have the Father, the Son, and what? That's why I say we're going to have a baptism next Sabbath. Can you say amen? It's a moving of the Holy Spirit. And then the Bible tells us, let's continue to say, He who has an ear, listen, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. To him who what? Overcome. We can overcome everything, not I, but who? But Christ. Oh, for us, let's overcome. Oh, let's sit it on the table. Let's strategize, you know. Who, what gift do you have? What, what, what bank accounts do you have? So after the time, we always look at our human what? Our human efforts. And then we try to prioritize. Yes, it's good. We need to what? To surrender all to God. Whether we have no resources, whether we have less leaders, whether we have, we need to surrender all to God. The majority, the minority can be a what? A majority. When Christ and the truth of God is dwell in our hearts. The church of Bacchamos sound and overcome the few of them. And that's the reason why we survive the truth of the Sabbath. Can you say amen? They were persecuted, but few of them, like uh, uh, Polycarp, he was a Sabbath keeper. His followers went underground. Keep the word of God. You and I share the same faith in God. Not in the eyes of people, but because in the eyes of who? Eyes of God. Let me continue to say, to him who overcome, I will keep some of the hidden manner. Remember when, she, when the children of Israel were out in the desert? They were hungry. And then God said to them, okay, uh, go out in the morning and collect the what? The manner. God feed his people. And then in the evening, go back and collect the what? When it comes to Friday, God says, the manna will, will, will fall double times. And then you go out with what? With your basin. And, and you have to collect double portions, not only for you on Friday, but also for you on Sabbath. Because there's no manna on what? On Sabbath. But some of them, oh, don't worry. I'll go tomorrow. And get it. When they go out on the Sabbath day, there's no manna. What happened to them? Their, their tummy got to growling because they were hungry. They don't listen to God. And they start to complain. My friend, we must obey. The fact is that, you know, it's reminded us of the holiness of the what? Of the Sabbath. The Sabbath day is the day that God blessed governance with, with his people. Is that right? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. It's identity of God's authority, of God's creation. He rest and blessed all those in the Sabbath. I will give you a manna if you overcome. That is the reason why we are here today. Not because the first elder and the pastor say, hey, let's go worship on Saturday. No. It's because of what? God say, go remember the Sabbath day to what? Keep it holy. Six days you shall labor. But the Sabbath is the day of the Lord. 
I bless, I sanctify, and you will be my what? You will be my children. My friend, I would like to appeal to you today. We need to be an overcomers. Overcomers in the blood of Jesus Christ. Knowing there's so many truth. Relative truth. But the truth we need to hold out in our hearts is what is in Jesus Christ. The Son of God incarnated, died, resurrected, and ascended to heaven and say, I shall come back again. And every eye shall see him. For those who believe in God, even though they die, but they still what? Live on for waiting for the second coming of the Lord. You and I will be awaiting for that day if we continue to be what? Faithful and be obedient to the word, to the truth of God. Not the truth of the popular, popular culture, but the truth. The minority becomes a majority because God is with them. I pray that God will bless you. I pray that you sustain and faith and have the truth of the scripture. Look at history. Our study of prophecy is just looking at history and parallel with the nuggets of truth centered in Jesus Christ. Our next presentation is in Sunday evening. So come out or share uh, a time with your friend at home. Say, come, come to my house. We'll have some popcorn now. And then we sit on the table and then we look, turn out the YouTube, and there you are. We can join together. Go eat there for and what? Make disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and what? The Holy Spirit. And teach them everything that God has shared unto us. May God bless you. Thank you for your dedications to God. May God bless your family and allow you to be a fountain of blessings to everyone that you come across. Shall we pray? Precious Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to worship. May your will be done forevermore. Help us to be overcomers of ourself, overcomers of our, of our lust of the flesh, overcomers of our selfishness, overcomers of our want to be better than others. But let Christ lives in us. Bless your people and bless the Sabbath day. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray and everybody says, Amen.